by combining the environment creation of Minecraft and the story and characters from one of their oldest brands, Square Enix has created something special in Dragon Quest Builders. You'll likely enjoy it if you're a fan of either Minecraft or Dragon Quest, but it brings enough new ideas to stand on its own. Fans of both franchises will find a lot that's familiar. The story suggests that the hero of the original Dragon Quest chose to join the evil Dragon Lord at the end, and this decision sent the world into an age of darkness. As the legendary builder prophesized to mend the kingdom's wounds, you bring light to the world one block at a time, battling iconic DQ monsters from slimes to golems. Minecraft fans will recognize the tried and true format of piling on dirt and stone during the day, then protecting your creations from monsters at night. As you venture out into the world, you discover materials allowing you to fashion new tools, weapons, and armor, which let you travel even further. You need to collect or grow food to stay alive, and different recipes are fashioned at different workstations. Builders is not as unforgiving as Minecraft can be. Lava doesn't kill you as fast, you don't drop all of your items when you die, and Chimera Wings conveniently fly you back to base. With the map divided into islands that can't be reached by boat or bridge, this world is not as wide open as randomly generated maps in other games, but it's how Builders shows you what it's made of that sets it apart. The game is divided into four story chapters in a free-for-all mode called Terra Incognita. Each chapter begins with you planting your flag at a base in need of repair. Remodel it and more people will show up, asking you to build specific types of rooms, think up new recipes, and head out into the world to find useful items or other survivors. During the day, the townsfolk will operate various workstations and produce random goods to lend a hand, or patrol and defend the base. Certain stations dictate the clothes they wear and weapons they wield, and you can assign people to sleep in specific rooms. You have to play the chapters in order, and each one ends with you saying goodbye to all the NPCs in your base, all the materials you've collected, and most of the recipes you've learned. This can be a shock the first time around, but it does a good job of resetting your goals, giving you a chance to start over with the skills you've acquired to build a better base with new stuff. The types of rooms and defenses you put together correspond to the plight of the local residents. People living in your base don't always get along, keeping secrets from each other and sometimes casting doubt on the decisions you have to make. Some moments have made us laugh, and others deal with subject matter we weren't expecting in a game about stacking dirt blocks. The act of piling things on top of each other is smooth and intuitive. Builders uses a third-person camera, sadly missing the first-person viewpoint from Minecraft. You can reset the camera to get into smaller spaces, but it doesn't always end up where you want. Unlike Minecraft, however, the shoulder buttons are used to aim up or down and strafe left and right, letting you drop rows of blocks with ease. Cladding and flooring also speeds up wall building, instantly turning columns of earth blocks into other materials. There's also an item called the Colossal Coffer that can be accessed when you're away from your base, so you don't have to stop mining when your inventory fills up. The monsters roaming each island drop useful items, but not experience. Your character doesn't level up, your base does, and sometimes you need to raise its level to move on to the next quest. You take and deal more damage by building better armor and weapons, and each chapter focuses on different types. It can be horrific to watch an enemy tear a massive gash into your base, but Builders is not a tough game. If you keep on track with the story, only going where it leads, you won't face anything you can't handle. The challenge comes from finding what you need and figuring out where to put it. Builders is also not short. Each chapter takes a couple of hours to finish, and that's without adding any kind of flourish to your base. If you're like us, you'll want to spend some time experimenting with new creations like Holy Water, which turns ashen wastelands into green hills, or railroad tracks, which make getting to specific locations a lot faster. When you finish a chapter, the game checks off whether or not you've completed certain activities, encouraging you to reload an older save file and find the hidden quests you missed, or to complete the chapter in a limited number of in-game days. Dragon Quest Builders can be very captivating, but there's definitely room for improvement if Square Enix develops a sequel. The AI of your subjects can be charming, but also frustrating when they get in the way or start climbing around. Tracking multiple quests can be confusing. Combat is extremely basic. Outside of a Zelda-esque spin attack and some upgraded weapons later on, it's just a lot of bopping and slashing. The chapter-ending boss fights can be epic, but sometimes they require brand new strange mechanics that can take a bit to figure out. The day and night cycle is too short, and the transitions are abrupt. There's no rising sun or setting moon. But one misstep that still has us scratching our heads is the fact that you can only build one item at a time. So if you need to build six of the same item, you have to press X a lot.
Despite its simplicity and rough edges, Builders gives you opportunities no other RPG can. It's uniquely satisfying to not only storm a castle and defeat its inhabitants, but to rip up their floors and staircases and steal all of their sconces and statues. Eventually, your neighbors will be tough enough to fight alongside you, joining combat and making the open fields a little less lonely. Instead of making you stumble onto new blocks and beasts in the open world, Builders introduces everything you need in a specific order that feels natural, keeping the discoveries meaningful. If the story is too constraining, you're given more freedom in a separate mode called Terra Incognita. The mode lets you expand your horizons, welcome monsters as well as humans into your compound, battle enemies in an arena, and share your creations with other players online. After each story chapter is in the books, you unlock a new island with that chapter's corresponding elements. It's here that everything comes together, and other than still needing to eat, you can express yourself without limitation. It's worth hustling through the story to get there. <laughs> Dragon Quest Builders is one of the best evolutions of the Minecraft model, and it features the sights and sounds of one of the biggest RPG franchises to boot. Hopefully bringing it to the States was worth Square Enix's time, because a sequel could work on a lot of trouble areas and make the journey even more immersive. If this world looks like one you'd like to make your own, don't hesitate to start chipping away. Easy Allies reviews are made possible by generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com easyallies to see our other videos and consider becoming a patron to help us make more.